All right. Let's get this other thing done here quick. Good morning, everybody. Be right with you. The other screen over here. Okay. Make sure it's muted. All right. Good. How's everybody doing? I hope well. And again, if you want to say good morning, and just I see a lot of you are already doing this, just where you're at, your general approximate area where you're from, it can help people, you know, uh, meet up and everything else. So. Jersey, Wisconsin, Texas, Ohio. Yeah, Oliver's here. Right there. I just thought he'd sit in a little bit, see what's going on. So... All right. Sounds good, everybody. Um, so today I don't really have anything planned. I just kind of thought, you know, I had to, I did three videos and two of them weren't very long. And I thought, well, I'm not going to bother putting one on for Sunday morning. Um, <clears throat> so I thought, well, I'll just kind of wing it and just see what we come up with. I have some things I'd like to talk about, but um, so. Hi, everybody else that's just tuning in. Uh, but we can do questions and answers. We can, you know, if anybody has a video that you'd like to say, hey, have you seen this video? Could we go over this video or whatever? Yeah, sure. We could do that. Um, whatever we want to do today. I had a free morning here, and so I thought, oh, I'll just get on and, and uh, see what we want to do. Okay, recommended topic, your last video on atheists. Okay, what exactly about that? Since you brought it up, you're the first one that kind of said anything there about what we should talk about. Last video on atheists, what what did everybody think about that? I mean, as far as um, okay, I think I had a little bit of a lag thing there. Um, <clears throat> oh, okay. I was one, and that's how I found the Lord last summer. Um, well, that's good. I mean, that's um, it's something I think a lot about. A lot of people say, "I want to see proof of God. I want to see proof of uh, you know anything spiritual or whatever else." Well. You don't think about it from the opposite, that you can actually see things in the occult world and whatever, and it can scare you enough to realize, okay, God's real. Um, so, uh, Brother Brian, can you do a video on the wickedness of Halloween? I actually had an old audio sermon that I did. It's not on YouTube anymore on my channel, but it might be someplace else. I don't know, but I actually did an audio sermon many years ago on that. Um Well, Mr. Denlinger, did you get my letter on the winter carrots? Now's a great time to plant for that. Um, I did, but, you know, as far as gardening and things like that, we don't really do a whole lot of it right now just for sake of time. And, and our, you know, we have moose and things on our property. They'll wipe out a garden very quickly. Um, and by the way, if you have questions, anybody out there, write question first, the word question, all in capital letters, too, helps. And then your question after that, because it makes it easier for me to see. <clears throat> Pretty spot on, I'd say. 
I found out about Masons worshiping the devil and realized God has had to be real as well. And your video on repentance showed up on my feed. Well, good. Praise the Lord. That was great to hear. Um, all right. Did you get a chance to look at the material I sent you on the Salvation Army? No, I did not. It's on my list. I mean, people send me so much stuff. It's very hard to get to it. And I have my own books to study and whatever else. And just all the stuff about being in homesteading and whatnot. It's tricky. I'll start with a question. Is the water in John 3, 5 in reference to God's word or the physical birth? Reminded me of your study with the water and the blood of the King, King James Version or King Jesus Version. Would have been in the study. John 3, 5. Uh, let me look that up real quick here. Uh, John chapter 3, verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Yeah. Yeah, I do believe it's the water of the washing of the word of God. Good question. Um, can you make a video ripping apart about the video by Pastor Michael Rowan, Rowan on YouTube called Lopsided Christianity. Uh, if he is he does he use new versions? Because if he does, I usually don't waste much time on those guys. I figure anybody that has the Holy Spirit should be able to see through some new version guy. Um, <clears throat> question, Brian, check out this video. Speaking of the Teslas, uh, we can go over nasty crash leaves Tesla badly mangled in. Hollandale Beach. I saw your comment on the video and I was kind of curious about that. I just haven't had time to check into it yet. Um, uh, anyone else an atheist before being saved? That would be an interesting question. If you were an atheist before you got saved, write it in the comments or the chat comment thing there. Okay, question. How does the office of a bishop or pastor work in a house church without hierarchy? Um, <clears throat> that's a good question. Uh, a house church situation, in the New Testament, you would have had smaller groups of people meeting together. And then I believe, um, <clears throat> you know, maybe a man from each of the different little house churches, uh, they would come together. I believe in multiple elders, um, not just one man pastor type of a deal. And so you would have, you know, men of smaller house churches that they could get together on their own. But then when the whole church comes together in one place, the Bible talks about, then you have a different setup there. And that, you know, the different offices of, of a bishop and an elder, or excuse me, a, a deacon, um, that's when that would come into play. So um, we lost so much over the centuries. It's, it's just insane. We're so used to doing things the wrong way. It's very hard to go back to doing things the right way. <clears throat> question what should the body of christ be doing this cursed generation to earn heavenly rewards asking because your latest video said that many people don't want eternal life yeah um right now uh that is very difficult to answer because i think what's going on is a lot of people are there they've heard so many different variations of the gospel there's so many different churches so many flavors of you know christianity and you just have to stand for the truth and just say, look, you know, the modern churches aren't going to tell you the church buildings aren't in scripture, that there's no Sunday best, there's no 10 percent tithe. Um, things are not getting better. They're getting worse. Just plant the seeds. You know, um, the, the big part of the harvest of the body of Christ, when a lot of people got saved, is in the past. And all we're trying to do right now, I think, is just plant some seeds uh, for those few that still might get saved yet before the catching up of the body of Christ, but mostly for the saints in the time of Jacob's trouble that will literally be willing to die for the word of God. Revelation chapter six talks about that. Um, so we're kind of planting seeds for people that go into the time of Jacob's trouble, I would say predominantly um, is what I would say to that. Uh, what do you think about Justin Peters? Don't know a thing about him. Um, are you still working on that pamphlet? You said you were planning on working on it during the fall or winter. Um, I put off the whole booklet thing um, for a while just because uh, there's so much stuff going right now. I don't know what to do. <clears throat> when I used to 
print uh, these these things right here. <clears throat> I used to print these and sell these on my website. Um, and I put it on for free, so you can go there and download this whole thing for free. But um, you see, it's back when I was down in Pennsylvania before I even knew my wife. And, you know, I printed it all myself. And I would bind it and the whole deal and everything else. And I started to realize, you know, I'm not even making money on these things. It's ridiculous. I can't print quick enough. And what's happening was, you know, it was just a huge amount of work. And it didn't make sense. I was just falling behind all the time. My cost was exceeding the ability to, to get it out. So I just had to finally just quit and say, okay, I can't, I can't keep doing this. You know, that's the thing about ministry that a lot of people, you know, have this little starry eyed vision that you can just do it for free. No, you can't. Um, if there's money that has to be spent, then there's money that needs to be earned. You know, so um, the booklets and whatever else that I wanted to do, I, I actually bought a printer. I bought a paper cutter. I bought other things to try and make my own. Uh, booklets i've just had to put it on hold because of all these other things that i have going on um, i really need to be able to hire some other people to help out with the ministry i need to have a totally new website my website is terrible the webs thing is junk um i don't know what to do about it honestly but i just i do not make enough income at the ministry here to be able to pay somebody else and it's unfair to try to get somebody to work for free you know, and I, just, I can't do that. So we're really praying about it. I'm hoping. Um, I don't know. I, I really am just kind of lost on that whole thing right now, to be honest. Um, I'd like to be able to make enough money to be able to hire other people. The ministry would move forward then. Um, so. Uh, <clears throat> question i was watching one of your older videos and you mentioned in passing that you didn't think devils and fallen angels are the same thing could you give more details on your thoughts on that well there were a thousand devils in the guy that had legion you know we are legion we are many whatever and there were a thousand devils that came out of him i don't think you can have a thousand fallen angels inhabiting the body of one man so um Question, did Solomon have any European wives? I don't know. No idea. Good question. Question, uh, Matthew 28, 19, Jesus baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Actually, it was Jesus said to go out and baptize them in the name of. So just a little correction there. Um, he didn't baptize. He was telling people to go out and do the baptism in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So why does Paul baptize only in the name of Jesus in the book of Acts? Thank you. Well, because there's the Godhead doctrine and Jesus is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So you can do either one. Either one would be valid. Not a problem. Question. What do you think of all the fake testimonies and false conversions here on YouTube? Do you ever watch and laugh at any? Um, yeah, I've seen a bunch of them. These total fake ones and you just think, what? You know, people come up with some weird stuff. Um, and, you know, God mocks these wicked people. And so, you know, I don't go out of my way to mock them or whatever, but there's some nuts out there. Um, <clears throat> question. There is a YouTube video called Seven Pre-Trib Problems with, and the Pre-Wrath Rapture. Could you do a re video refuting this one? Yeah, sounds pretty good. Let me write that title down. I'll check it out then sometime. I like to kick posties. I've been doing that. That's probably my number one thing I like to do. Seven pre-trib problems and the pre-wrath rapture. Okay, I will check into it. I'll get back to you on that. <clears throat> I remember the Lord showing me so much when I got saved. I had to learn a lot, or I had a lot to learn, excuse me. 
um, got messed up by Philip Newton so bad I had to break fellowship with him. I've been on point with scripture since. Um, everybody out there, please watch out for Philip Newton. If you haven't seen Jacob Thompson's web or his uh, video he did on Philip Newton, Philip Newton is outright teaching works salvation now. He's really messed up. And again, you know, the enemies of this ministry, they'll say, well, we've known that for years. You didn't know how bad he's messed up right now for years. No, you didn't. You, you wicked people out there, you need to just shut up, okay? And again, oh, I, we saw he was false. And it, I have grace for people, right? I saw, I knew that there were problems with Philip Newton for a long time. And I had grace for him. And I tried to let him work out those problems. And he didn't work out those problems. So I've had to break fellowship with the guy. He's a heretic. Don't waste your time on him. Um, quite frankly, I hope the Lord gets him off of YouTube. He's just making more trouble. Um, rides this ministry all the time. And, you know, and oh, Brian comes out with a video. Then I'll come out and correct his errors. And, and I see people that used to follow this ministry. And they're over on his channel now. And he has little Skype conversations. And, you know, just draws away disciples. And, yeah, he's got major problems. I'll guarantee you that. I know his type. Um, question, have you ever looked at Psalm 119, 119 and made the connection with 9-11-01 with the dross and then mentioning of the wicked? No, I don't think I have. Let me check that out quick. Psalm 119. I have it up on my computer here. I don't, I'm not sharing screen, so. Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love thy testimonies. Yeah. Dross is kind of the scrap metal that's, you know, when you're refining some precious metal, you scrape the dross off the top. So it's a good point. <clears throat> Question. Do you know about any tracks specifically for Catholics? I've been thinking about making some showing the discrepancy between their traditions and the scriptures. Making your own tracks is about the best thing that you can do, quite frankly. I used to make mine even before I got into video ministry. I made my own. Um, chick tracks, there's a, some really good stuff on chick tracks, but then there's a lot of messed up heresy stuff. And Oh, here, Catholic, here's a tract on why Catholicism is wrong, but then we'll show you graven images of the Trinity. And the Catholic goes, okay, I thought you said, you know, <laughs> it just messes them up. And find a good local church or something. No, no. So, yeah, making your own tracks is the way to go, in my opinion. Um, question, is Ezekiel 18, 20 for us today? I think I know which one you're talking about, but let me just get the scripture so I know for sure. Ezekiel 18 and verse 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity iniquity of the father neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him um no the soul that sinneth it, it shall you know it shall die uh, our soul is cut free from our body so no um you know i don't know what more to say on that one um That wasn't the one I was thinking of. <clears throat> Question. I am struggling with the bride versus body issue. I don't understand how we can be both. Is there a specific video where you teach on this in detail? Uh, the marriage supper of the lamb, I think it's called. I think is what that one would be. Um, check that one out. I think I might teach on that in that one. Okay, I'm trying to get down through these. <clears throat> Question. I just ordered the book about Sam P. Jones by his wife. Robert Breaker connects to a fellow YouTube, YouTuber missionary, Spencer Smith. Spencer is exposing the Masons and sells a Sam P. Jones t-shirt. Yeah. Uh, Sister, I did, I did actually get your email on that, and I looked into it. Yeah, you're absolutely right, which is really weird. 
you know, um, you know, it, it has been so frustrating for me over the years because I see so much sin and wickedness with the brethren and and I just think, okay, how much of this do I put up with? How much of this do I just not mention? Do I just overlook some of this? And then there's some things that are just glaringly obvious like that one. And I think, oh, brother, you know, does this mean he's a Freemason? Does this mean, you know, he's just worshiping a man and I don't care what he was part of? Or I have no idea. But yeah, Spencer Smith tied to the Baptist build, uh, Babel buildings. Yeah, sells a Sam Jones T-shirt. It's kind of a, you know, I mean, you have to understand all that stuff. So, but thank you for bringing that up. Um, so, yeah, people watch out for Spencer Smith. I can't endorse that guy. Um, you know, it, it, again, it, oh, I've brought out the truth on it. I've documented the fact that Sam Jones is a Freemason, you know, not just a low level one. But he was a higher level free, Freemason, a Catholic knight. Worked with the Catholic Church. Worked with the ecumenical movement. Why aren't Baptists just coming out and, and saying the guy was a total heretic? He wasn't even a Baptist. He was a Methodist. You know, the Methodists had so many problems with female preachers from the very beginning. John Wesley was for female preachers. His mother preached. You know, Baptists, hello. But Sam put on a good show, you know, so well, brother Sam Jones, oh, yeah, he was a good man. Question, what would you say to Christians who still have stocks in 401ks with the coming economic crash? I would say seriously consider getting money out of any kind of retirement things or whatever else. Uh, 401ks have already lost, I think, 20% of their value. Um, okay, there are certain things we don't know about the future that we're uncertain of, but there are other things we know for sure. We know for sure that they have to bring in a cashless money system. We know that, okay? Um, so they have to destroy the current financial system. So you need to think about that. Your money's not secure in that stuff. Um, do the research on your own. I'm not some financial guru guy that can tell you, you know, I can't give you perfect advice on You have to do your own research, but just be really careful with the investment thing. Um, <clears throat> question, do you plan on writing a book against heresies would help a lot? I've thought of it, but just finding the time to do it is a challenging thing. Um, question, I have just read coffee reduces blood flow to the brain by 40%. So coffee is a poison that thumbs down the brain. What do you think? I totally agree. I hate coffee. <laughs> um, I'm not a coffee fan. I don't drink coffee. I, I drink herbal teas. A lot of them we actually grow ourselves now. Um, we, I shouldn't say grow. Technically, the Lord grows them, but we go out and we harvest our own wild, you know, herbs and things like that, make tea out of them. So, but um, coffee has just never been a thing for me. Um, whether that's true or not, I'd have to look into it, look up the research on it. If you're a coffee drinker out there, maybe you should look that whole thing up and see if that's actually true. And if it is, get away from coffee. You know, I'm getting into the practice of whatever I put into my body, I want it to give me a positive benefit. If I'm going to drink something, I want it to help me. I don't want to just drink it because it tastes good or something like that. Um, question, newly saved here, still unclear if celebrating Easter is okay. Um, while the standard for a Christian in the New Testament is Romans chapter 14, um, two places, Acts 15, Romans 14, Acts 15, the Jewish disciples come together and they say, OK, we're leading these Gentiles to the Lord. What are we supposed to tell them? Are they supposed to celebrate our feast days? Are they supposed to act like us, be like us, become Jewish converts? And the answer is no. They say three things that they're supposed to abstain from things strangled blood and fornication and oh, excuse me idols that was another one um you could make things strangled in blood the same in the slaughtering of animals you know um you're not supposed to eat raw meat um abstain from fornication sex outside of marriage and idols don't have idols in your home now 
Um, they didn't say anything at all about holidays. Um, well, that's a pagan feast day or whatever else. You can't do pagan feast days. That's just terrible and, and horrible. God wants the preservation of culture. That's why even after he makes a full end of all nations and eternity, he brings them back. So in the millennial kingdom, there will be the different separate nations. You go back to Genesis um, after the flood, God se separates them. He splits them up. Go out and make your own cultures. He confounds the, the languages. Um, God loves culture. God loves diversity. Uh, the different races, different ethnicities. God loves that. So if your culture has uh, whatever holiday celebrations and things, and it's not directly causing you to be in sin, uh, you know, Halloween, there's no point in celebrating death and dressing up in costumes and going out and getting junk food. You know, Easter, we don't bother with Easter because it's, again, the thing of the, you know, um, uh, you know, candy and whatever else. Um, just no point in it. Uh, Christmas time, we celebrate Christmas. Um, there's been years we put up a Christmas tree because it looks pretty. Um, red and green, it reminds us of, you know, God's throne. Um, the green fir tree is one of the images of God in the Bible. So um, the Lord, I'm not saying a God, I'm saying the Lord. You know, we don't do Santa Claus. We don't get carried away with the present thing. We don't eat cookies or candy canes or, you know, do what you want at the holidays. I mean, this is a big point of contention. That's why I have to just park on this point here for a little bit. Because there are people that have departed from this ministry and call me a heretic because I'm not against holidays. People can do what they want. That's what the New Testament teaches. So please just don't fall for this anti-holiday stuff. Most of the guys that brought it out, Doc Marquis, William Schneblin, they get into all this anti-holiday stuff. And I'm not even convinced that those guys are saved. I think that they were infiltrators, quite frankly, trying to sow discord among the brethren. Um, brethren should not be fighting over the celebration of holidays. That's nonsense. Okay. So entirely up to you. And you know, when Easter is actually mentioned in Acts chapter 12, it isn't, you know, it's just in context, just kind of, you know, after Easter, Herod was going to bring Peter forth. No big deal. It's not after the evil satanic holiday of Easter or something. You know, people get really carried away with that stuff. So be careful. Um, Continuing here. I'm way behind in my comments, I realize. Or questions and things. Question, have you heard about the church elder Epiphanius? He was a heresy hunter way back in the day teaching the Godhead doctrine. Just wondering if you knew of this man. No, I don't. Um, I haven't really studied much on the church fathers because I view most of it just to be a waste of time. I want to know what the Bible says. I don't have to find people that taught exactly what I teach down through the centuries uh, because the Catholic Church has covered up so much of that stuff. They burned the writings of heretics. So how do you really prove anything? Um, question, is there a possible double implication of prophecy in John 2.19? One being in following uh, verse 22, the other possible being a new heaven, a new earth, uh, new Jerusalem, Revelation 21, 1 through 2. Um, okay, well, I'll check into it here real quick. Very detailed question. John chapter 2, verse 19. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Okay, I'm, I see what you're saying. You know, one day is with the Lord is a thousand years. So um, 2,000 and then the third thousand year would be the millennial kingdom. Could possibly be. Verse 22. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Yeah. Um, and the new Jerusalem there. Um, yeah. I can see what you're saying. You know, the new heaven and new Jerusalem, Revelation chapter 21. That would actually be 3,000 years. The millennial kingdom would be the 3,000 year thing. So, yeah, interesting way to look at that. Uh, question in response to the um, question about devils and fallen angels. Some people think that devils are the disembodied spirits of dead Nephilim. Any thoughts on this? I don't know of any clear scriptures on that, to be very honest. I'd, um, I mean, you have the story in the Old Testament 
can't think of where it's at right now, but the these different spirits are standing before the Lord and they say, um, you know, about we want to be a, you know, how do we deceive this one king or whatever? And, and the one guy says, you know, he steps forward, and he's a lying spirit, you know, and that lying spirit, you know, he says, I'm going to go down and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets, these false prophets. Well, it's not an angel, you know, and is it the disembodied spirit of a dead Nephilim? No, I can't see that. It's an interesting little theory, um, but, you know, don't ever make major doctrine out of something that's not clearly written in Scripture. Um, when you get into that stuff, you, then you start to head towards heresy. That's And you start to become, it's all about, you know, this peculiar teaching or something like this. It's not clearly stated in Scripture. And so be careful about that. See this one here. Do you have any videos on the gap theory? No, I don't. I'm not a gap theory believer, by the way, but um, I'm not going to fight somebody over it. <clears throat> well, on the topic, do you think the wickedness of angels is going to be repeated like Genesis 6? Since the Savior has already come and they can't foil a bloodline in Judah and what Jude says. Um, <clears throat> there's some interesting arguments on that you have in the book of Daniel that they shall mingle themselves with the seeds of men but they shall not cleave one to another even as iron is not mixed with clay there's that um, there's there's some different things that would point towards you know angels and women together um, you know in the end times I don't know it's a possibility um, <clears throat> it's kind of like the devil has a handful of cards that he could play and, you know, he may or may not use one. If the scripture is not exactly explicitly clear, then I can't say one way or the other. Could you get me something to drink, please? <clears throat> My throat's given out on me here already. Question. Hebrews 8, 10 through 13 and Hebrews 10, 15 through 17. I want to get your thoughts on those two verses. Dr. Ruckman mentioned Hebrews 8 is written to the children of Israel, but Hebrews 10 is written to a Christian. Okay. Hebrews chapter 8. Let me go there really quickly. <clears throat> Apologize about my voice given out here. Hebrews 8, uh, 10 through 13. Let me put this over here. Uh, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. Um, <clears throat> for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. And that, yes, I would definitely agree that that is written specifically to the Jews. There's no question about that. We don't have to have some kind of a new covenant for us. That is written to the Jews. <clears throat> now the other one is Hebrews 10, 15 through 17. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Um, <clears throat> well, I don't see anything going to a Gentile or to a Christian there. Um, I see that still with the thing of the new covenant. I don't know where, I'm not familiar with those you know that commentary of Ruckman I have it here but I'd have to actually look it up and study that before I could give you a really good answer on that thank you I brought my big cup <laughs> this is my big cup of water right here there I like to drink water excuse me <clears throat> thank you very much so, um <clears throat> but, you know, I believe the book of Hebrews is written to Hebrews. So I don't really see any kind of a thing there of it written to a Christian. I would disagree with Ruckman on that. <clears throat> Question.
Question, does it seem like there really will be food shortages come the end of 2022, early 2023? Is this just big scare tactics? Um, I do believe that there's going to be some food shortages um, up here in northern Maine, specifically Aroostook County, which is to the north. I'm pointing this way. That's north. Um, potato farming is a huge thing. Potato farming and logging. That's the two big industries of northern Maine. Potato farming um, here in northern Maine used to be the biggest in the country. And then Idaho took over and, and you have you hear the Idaho potato thing. But northern Maine used to produce more potatoes than any other place. And it was ever since we've been here, we've been here since 2014, bought my first property in 2013, but we moved in 2014 every year. Potato trucks everywhere, the big potato harvesting machines. They're out of the fields this time of the year harvesting potatoes. And you see the signs up for new potatoes um, that they have for sale. And you can stop along the roadsides and you can, everybody has a little potato stand and whatever else. This is the first year that I've seen potato harvesting equipment sitting along the road for sale. Multi-million dollar equipment. And they're not, they're not even touching the fields. And I'm already hearing of potato shortages and rationing of potatoes in some stores in New York. So is there going to be a famine? Well, the Bible says there would be a famine. Um, food shortages going along with it? Yeah. <clears throat> what do you think of going to a bible school I'm not talking about college but there's a really good bible school in florida that can open the doors for mission work etc uh, pbi pensacola bible institute um <clears throat> yeah you know i'm not really totally against that if you feel that you want to go to a mission field and whatever else you know not a big problem not in scripture. You just have to understand that it's not scripturally something that you have to do or whatever else. But um, I'm not totally opposed to somebody going to PBI. Uh, I've known many graduates and students and things of PBI over the years. <clears throat> Question Have you heard of Hell House Ministry? They use a haunted house style tour showing the evils of sin and hell with a sermon salvation message at the end. No, I haven't heard of that. I began to watch your response to me on YouTube, but I am disappointed in your response. I was hoping that you would interact with my position, but all that you did was set up straw men to knock down. Um, Trinitarianism is adding to scripture. Uh, it, well, couldn't we just come to a reasonable conclusion here and kind of you know compromise on our positions? No, there's no compromise with Trinitarianism. Trinitarianism is a satanic heresy. It's adding to the word of God. If you don't agree with that, then there's really not much to discuss with you. Plain and simple. <clears throat> Brian, I'm from Northern Ireland, and I went to a church called Cat Castle Derg Christian Fellowship. I was wondering if you'd do a video about them. They're, us they're ESV users and teach works salvation. Uh do a video on them. I don't do a whole lot of videos on uh, stuff like that. New version users. I just, you know, preach the King James Bible and that's the way it is. Um, I'm still willing to have a dialogue. For what? What's the purpose, Caleb? What's the purpose? I'm never going to agree with Trinitarianism. So I don't know what the point of that would be. Um, Brian, can you explain when you die, are you sleeping like Lazarus, or do you go to heaven or hell now already, or only at the judgment, etc.? I've been struggling with this a bit. Your soul and your spirit would go to be with God. Your body is in the grave until the catching up of the body of Christ. Paul wrote about absent from the body, 
present with the Lord. He's absent from the body. In other words, his body's still on the earth. It's dead. It's buried. If you did enough archaeological work, you could probably find where Paul's buried. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It's not really a thing that we should concern ourselves with. The Catholics would probably like to make a holy shrine to it or something. But um, <clears throat> uh, your body, your, when you die, you are absent from the body and present with the Lord. Um, Paul writes about it. He says, you know, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. You know, he, he was called up to the third heaven and he saw things which, you know, he wasn't able to utter. He can't talk about it. Um, and so he did go up, um, but it wasn't his body. So if you died, I'll just say it this way. If I die right now, somebody drives past this window back here behind me and I may shoot and bang and on camera, the blood goes, sorry to be graphic, <laughs> but I fall down like this, you know, uh, my soul and my spirit go right to be with the Lord. And my body here, well, be kind of a mess for my wife and son to have to take care of, but they'd have to bury me and whatever else. And, and uh, that would be that. My body would be in the ground and somebody could come and say, oh, this is where Brian Denlinger is buried. But when the catching up happens, my body goes up to join my soul and spirit. So you're not in some kind of a weird state uh, of just kind of there. I don't really know what, you know, no, you'd go right to be with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> um, question. Any advice on witnessing to Roman Catholics that say they believe the same thing? Asking for a friend. Thanks for your answers and all your work, brother. Um, take a catechism. Catechisms are really fun to show to Catholics. I have done that for years, and it just blows their mind. And they'll, they'll actually deny the catechism. It's so funny. You'll say, um, do you believe that you can become God? Of course not. I don't believe that. Well, can I show you what your catechism teaches? Uh, just trying to find one here. That would be good. Um, I don't have it bookmarked right now. There's one on the Trinity. But this thing actually teaches that you can become God. And so take their own writings, take their own material to them. Um, and show them and just say, this is what your catechism teaches. Um, and if you really want to have fun, the, the regular catechism is good, but these ones over here are really good. Um, the new St. Joseph Baltimore Catechism, this thing right here. Oh, this is a good one. This one here, you can really stump them. Um, uh, see if I'll just show one here, if I can find one quick. Uh, just flipping through this. So doing different studies, I start to lose some of my old bookmarks that I had. Where's that thing at? Sorry about this. I'm trying to find it. Okay. Um, do you say... Say to a Catholic, you say, um, do you believe that the ordained priest takes the place of Jesus Christ? Oh, I don't believe that. What about that? Come on, focus. Show my page. And I've I've shown some of the crazy nutty stuff that they have in this Baltimore Catechism, and people and the Catholics will say. We don't believe that. I, I don't. I reject the Baltimore Catechism. You just take them to the front and you say, OK, right down here, you have all the imprimatur, nihil obstat, all the other stuff from the Catholic Church that say it's official Catholic doctrine right down here. If it will focus again. You can see it pretty good, I guess. But, you know, this is official recognized Catholic doctrine. So that's how I would answer that. Definitely um, show them their own materials, and they'll be shocked. Great way to witness to them. <clears throat> Question, what are your thought, thoughts on Dr. Andy Woods? I think he's the guy that's a Jesuit, Jesuit educated, if I remember. Let me just check it here quick. 
No, no. Okay, I'm thinking of somebody else. No. Okay, what was the other guy I'm thinking of? Can't think of who the other guy is. I don't know anything about Andy Woods. I see his channel there, but uh, yeah, I was thinking of somebody else. So take that back. Okay, I don't know who the guy is. He might be Jesuit educated, but there's another guy. Uh, he was a buddy of James White for a while or something. And you know, him and James White are back and forth on stuff. And um, he's a guy I was thinking of that was a Jesuit educated. Um, Uh, question you said answered a question when jesus died the soul went to hell can you explain that further what scriptures can i read on that oh boy that's a really big study um i can't think of the one sermon that i did that in uh let's see if i can find that quick Can't think of which one that was. I don't remember what the thing was called. I apologize. I cannot think of that one right now. Um, but you know, if you believe the King James Bible, the Bible says that there's three in one there in terms of these three are one and body soul spirit man is man is made after the similitude of god i apologize i mean to go through that it would take a lot of scriptures and i don't have them all written out right here and everything else and it would be pretty much the end of any more questions so trying to get to everybody else's questions and i did do a study on it i'm just not sure what the thing was called um i'm trying to think of what that would be called I think sometimes this uh, search thing on my channel doesn't really work on it. Okay, uh, there it is. What part of the Godhead went down to hell? Let me just get the link here. I'll post the, the link to it. Actually, let me do the title as well. Somebody else has probably already done this, but... <laughs> I'll uh hold on a second here. Okay, there. So that'll be in the thing down there. I'm way behind in the comments here, so sorry about that. Um Okay. Um, what are some subjects that you haven't really looked into or aren't as deep into as others? God bless, brother. Uh, well, the quickest one on that one would be um, the uh, flat earth thing. I haven't looked into it. I'm not educated on it to go one way or the other on it. And I've tried to make that plain to people. And I get people that still, you know, I can't support your ministry anymore because you're not clearly teaching a flat earth. Uh, uh, could you okay? Could you show me anywhere in Scripture where somebody parts company over the shape of the Earth? You know, um, they didn't have to. They all believed in the flat Earth. Uh, okay, chapter and verse on that. I mean, it, I admit I'm ignorant on the subject. I don't have time to study it. I mean, people send me mountains of information and everything. I love to get to all of it, but you know. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we have to do. I can't just take time to study everybody's subjects. You know, 
Brian Denlinger is not an infallible pope. <clears throat> okay, I'm trying to get down through this stuff. <clears throat> Question. Speaking of coffee, have you tried dandelion coffee? Dandelion is supposed to be a super herb to clean the body. Have you tried before, Brian? Um, <clears throat> yes, dandelion root um, is what it's called. It's not really dandelion coffee. Um, and yes, we are big fans. I've made it myself, and we also purchase it. But it's really good stuff. <clears throat> I'm a very newly saved teenager and going to Catholic school. My parents tell me that I'm only going there for an education and should just should just ignore the Catholic influence. What do I do? Um, well, I did a video years ago on the thing of um, saved teen and lost parents and what do you do in that situation? You can look at that. It's one of the FAQ videos many years ago that I did. Um, but um, I would ask your parents if there's a possibility of you being homeschooled, doing some kind of studies online, um, transferring to an, an, another kind of school or something, and just saying, I really don't want to be taught by Catholics. Um, Um, I understand how you celebrate Christmas was not now not going overboard with cookies and things and that's cool but can I send you treats for Christmas it's the best I can do um, no we really don't want any kind of sugary stuff I've pretty much cut sugar out of my life on that and we're pretty picky about what we eat um, <clears throat> question what is your opinion of Charles Lawson I believe he is fake um, it's very hard to tell with Baptist pastors, quite frankly, because a lot of them, they just compromise and they'll go along with things. And Ruckman was very much the same way. Um, he compromised in a lot of areas. And I just think, oh, man, why would he do that? So um, Lawson has made some really stupid comments about the thing of Constantine and being saved. And I don't know if Trump is a saved man. And, you know, so I, I'm careful. I don't recommend Charles Lawson. Um, what are your thoughts on Catholic high schools? Avoid them like the plague. Um, okay. Sorry, everybody. I'm trying to get to these comments. I know I'm way behind here right now. Um, I'll try to find my way back to the video. I usually, okay, there it is. All right. Um, question. What relationship should we have with lost family? Should I move out or just be distant with them? I've shared the gospel with them, but they continue to stay Catholic and blaspheme the KJV. Move out. Definitely. Um, as soon as you can, you will have a lot more peace. Uh, strife and contention and things like that. Um, it's not worth it. I've you know, had to come to the realization that most of my family is lost. There's a, you know, I think my dad, I'm not sure about, but the rest of them, they're lost. And, um, you know, and I just, I'm still kind. I still write, you know, and whatever else, but there's that barrier that's just there. And I'm glad that I don't live around them, quite frankly. Question, advice, please. I am just bitter. I know not to be of the world, but at the same time, it is so suffocating. Here in Canada, it is atrocious how society embraces evil, sinful garbage. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. You're going into the grocery stores and you hear the. Around here, there's this weird thing. But there's, you know, 1980s classic rock in a grocery store. And that's the stuff I used to listen to when I was lost. I think the devil tells them what to do. <clears throat> you know, literally, our grocery store in town is owned by a Roman Catholic and uh, plays 80s rock, 1980s rock, you know, sometimes and whatever. I don't get it. 
Um, you just have to do what you can do to stay away from it. Get out of nature, you know, listen to hymns, you know, maybe you have an MP3 player with little earbuds or whatever. Make sure they're wired. Don't use the wireless ones there it can give you cancer, but anything wireless puts off EMF fields and that's not good for your body. Um, too many uh, EMF fields in your body will start to create cancer. Um, so, uh, yeah, but, you know, put a little MP3 player in with the, you know, wired one or something with some hymns playing on it and just kind of try to deal with it, but avoid a lot of really sinful places as much as possible. Um, uh, question, how does someone deal with the guilt and shame of failing God many times? How do you get over feelings of giving up? Um, that's another thing I understand. Uh, it's tough to go through. Uh, you just have to live one day at a time and just say, okay, Lord, I'm sorry. I messed up or whatever. Please help me move forward. And there'll be times you will mess up and it will take a, a good week or two to really feel back in fellowship with the Lord. I've been through that. And, um, so, you know, best advice I can give on that. Just, uh, get it confessed, forsaken, move forward. I missed a question here. Uh, what are your thoughts on the idea of a young earth? I believe it's a young earth, um, approximately 6,000 years old, a little less than 6,000 years old. <clears throat> what is your favorite hymn to sing with Oliver? Uh, he's Every night we read the Bible and then sing a hymn. We read a chapter and then we sing a hymn, and he's getting to memorize a lot of the old hymns but his favorite hymn is a uh, hark the herald angels sing that's his favorite one uh, if we ever make new tour of my library video <laughs> um I don't know. I might. Um, my library has probably tripled since I made the original one many years ago. Uh, my wife has brought a lot of books in and she's got a lot of books and whatever else. Some really rare ones. So I don't know. I might do that. <clears throat> Question. Can you clarify the meaning of Matthew 536? I'm in disagreement with someone over it, specifically not being able to make one hair white or black. Okay, Matthew 5.36. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. Um, it's just simply saying naturally. Obviously, you can make it white or black with dye. <laughs> That's not really, does, it doesn't count. It's just simply saying you don't have control over... Um, you know, you don't have control over your body, whatever God decides when you're going to get white hair and when you, and whatever else. So, I was looking into this last night. Where do you think the nail placement were in Jesus' hands and feet, wrists instead of palms, etc.? Just curious what you think. Yeah, I'd kind of lean more towards sort of right in here, kind of like right there or so, because if you go up too far into here, it's just going to rip out when you, you know, get the weight on there. But then they could have been cruel enough to do it there, and you have to kind of hold on like this so it doesn't rip out. I, I don't know. Romans are some sick people. Um, Trying to get down through here. Sorry if I've missed any questions. I'm just trying to get things here. Question Do you think we're going cashless soon on March 9th, 2022? President Biden signed a long awaited executive order. Yeah, 14 oh something or other. Yeah, to, to bring in digital cashless currencies and things. It's going to take them years to do that. Um, it's kind of a little bit stressful. You think, oh, great, central bank digital currencies. That's not good. And it's not. Uh, we need to fight it. But um, 
they're starting to get the thing, the ball rolling, and they're going to crash the stock market at some point in time. Um, I think possibly next year. Uh, the dollar is going to crash. I mean, there there's a bunch of things. Hyperinflation, you know, they they have to crash the financial system. Remember, that's Bible prophecy. To bring in the mark of the beast, the financial system has to be crashed. So, um, that's what I would say to that. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> Question, do you have any advice on for raising four children under the age of six in this wicked world? Um, try to get as, as far out into the countryside as possible, quite frankly. Um, I don't know how parents can raise their children in the city at this point in time. It's just, it is so horribly vexing, um, really bad. Um, so in the countryside, if at all possible. Question. Good day, Brian. Hi. Um, is 1 Corinthians 15, 29 uh, to be related with Romans 7? Uh, let me look that up quick. 1 Corinthians 15, 29. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? And Romans 7. Romans chapter 7. Okay, it's talking about the thing of being dead to the old life and things. Um, hmm. That's a good question. Uh, I that's one I would definitely have to study more. Um, yeah, I, I can't just answer that one off the top of my head. I think you're probably right, but I can't say, yeah, definitely, or whatever else. The thing about being baptized for the dead, in other words, when you, you know, you're born again, you die to the old self, your old man is dead. Um, good point. Let me write that one down, actually. Um, I will do a study on that. Okay, there, written down. Sorry, I can't answer more in detail, but I just think I need to study that one more before I can really say much more on that. But very good question, excellent question. What does your daily uh, routine look like? <laughs> um, oh, good night. Uh, there is no daily routine for me. There's a, um, I was reading a book about the, country living and things uh stories uh publisher storybook publisher s-t-o-r-e-y from vermont and they were talking about how that um you know uh living in the countryside is almost constant chaos and you know that's very true i mean you can have a windstorm come up and it blows a tar tarp off of a piece of equipment outside or rips a hole in something or part of the roof rips up and you know, i wasn't going to build that or fix that today but you have to because you know the rain's getting in now or um you get a flat tire you have to change that you have you know and there's so many things that come in oh the apples are starting to fall off the tree it's happening earlier this year i wasn't planning on the, taking a day to pick apples and um i mean right now i have uh, mullen that's dry and herb that I need to put into jars. I have uh, wild prickly lettuce, same thing. I have some bladder rack from the ocean that we got that's dry and I need to grind it into powder and put that in a jar. Um, <laughs> daily routine? Uh, I don't know what really what that is there. <laughs> Good question, but that's a hard one to answer. Um, what are your favorite fiction novels? I don't read fiction. 
unless I'm looking into stuff about evolution or, uh, you know, the catechism or something like that. <laughs> um, Brian, do you watch any other YouTuber? Yes, I uh, will watch a lot of secular channels in terms of finance and things because I was, I had took a uh, accounting class in high school and I hated any kind of business stuff. And so I'm very much behind in a lot of my understanding of, you know, the financial world and economics and investing and all that other stuff. So I'm studying that right now. If I, if there are other things that I need to study or research, um, if there's some things I need to do with my son in terms of homeschooling, show him different. Uh, he's really into airplanes right now. And um, so I might look up a video on an airplane or something that he's interested in and we'll see the history of it and see how it flew and whatever. Things like that. But as far as um, Bible preaching and things right now, no. I really don't have any others that I watch on a regular basis. Um, hi, Brian. What do you know about the number 101 and Freemasonry? Uh, not a whole lot on that. Um, I don't. <clears throat> I was very sad to hear how my local church building believed everything they read online when I told them to watch your videos. Many of them said you denied Jesus and well, Jesus was God, which is not true. Yeah, absolutely not. They'll say another one is they'll say that uh, Brian Denlinger teaches that Jesus is not the son of God. I've never said that. You know, just simply ask, ask these people, say, could you please show me in Brian's own words, where he said Jesus is not God, where Brian says Jesus is not the son of God. I say Jesus is not God, the son, because that appears nowhere in scripture. But is he the son of God? Well, of course, he's the son of God. And Jesus is definitely God. But um, yeah, there's the devil. And just ask people to just say, OK, a real man of God. Would the devil lie about him? Would you be able to just read anything online and and, you know, would people take his words out of context? You know, it's so weird. Old Brian's been exposed on that. You know, why don't you ask me questions? Why don't you send me a letter? I still have that offer out there. Send me, my enemies, send me a letter, certified mail, so that you know I picked it up. I have to sign for it. And then if I don't answer it, then you can expose Brian Denlinger. Just come out, ask me the questions. Okay, I, a lot of times I'll do them online or whatever. So, um, try to get caught up here as much as I can. Um, question, I believe you are against monetization, but have you thought of doing the Patreon thing? I think it is a bit of a membership that then that might support your website development. Um, for anybody new, I did Patreon many years ago. What, I think 2016, something like that, 2017, I don't know, somewhere in there. And a bunch of people on YouTube were coming and stealing my private Patreon videos and reposting them on YouTube. They, they had you know infiltrated my Patreon group, and they were posting private videos on YouTube. And I couldn't figure out who was doing this, and I was trying to figure it out. Came to find out that the one guy that was doing it was actually a convicted criminal. Um, internet scammer had been in prison for uh, drunken driving and a bunch of other stuff. The guy was a total fraud. I think he's still around or whatever else. And so just in a private thing, I brought out, and I said, oh, look, this guy's criminal. What should I do? Should I try to take this guy to court or whatever else? Patreon took down my whole page because I doxed the guy and whatever else. So uh, am I going back to Patreon? No, I'm not. Uh. 
<clears throat> um, you mentioned in one of your videos about which part of Godhead went to hell, that the soul went to hell. Does hell hear the place of torment or a place of comfort to Abraham's bosom? It would have been Abraham's bosom. David would. Yeah, I think is what the name was there, the Jesuit guy. Thank you. Um, question, is America right now the best country to live in um, or other country better? I saw Belarus uh, took a stand in um, never changed during 2020 to 2022. Is this true? No idea. I have no idea. Um, I'm not really sure on that one. America is about ready to go into war and a bunch of other things, but most other countries are too. In Matthew 6, 9, Jesus speaks about how to pray to the Father in Luke 11, 2. Is the same yet different? What is the true pray to the Father? Um, well, you know, I don't think it's a really overly, you know, you have to say it exactly in a specific way or something. It's just our Father which art in heaven or dear Heavenly Father or dear Lord or whatever. And then you say in Jesus' name, amen. That's what I would say to that. Um, I've been, I've recently been considering just doing a basic outlining of how to raise and take care of a puppy. Sorry, this is mundane, but any basic scripture that comes to mind, I should consider. Um, the, about the righteous man cares for the life of his beast. Um, that's what I would say to that. Um, you know, if you would not be willing to feed your child something why would you feed it to your dog you know kind of a thing is what i would say a lot of the commercial dog foods are just terrible um so uh question as you do not put or as you do not believe in the gap, what significance, if any, do you put on the word replenish found in Genesis 128 and 9 and 1? Do you put zero significance? Why particularly due to the context? Yeah, I mean, you get into all that stuff. I mean, like I said, I have not done any studies on it and whatever, so uh, I can't get into it here. That would be a major big thing and whatever else. I understand what you're saying, you know, that the, the earth was there and it got wiped out and they had to replenish the earth after that and everything else. That's one of the arguments, but then there's arguments back and forth. It's a big study. I can't get into it here. Um, this is just a question and answer thing, quick questions and answers that I can try to get to people. Uh, question. Going through a very, very difficult time finding a suitable spouse partner. I've asked God if it's his will to be single, but I'm not hearing anything, no clear direction. What would you recommend? Keep praying. I did it until I was 36. <laughs> I know. I understand. I'm um, trying to get through this here. I'm trying to get caught up. Um, question, what is actually wrong with Protestants? I do not know much about the history other than I am a descendant of a Huguenot or Huguenot. Um, Protestants did a lot of good things. Um, some of them, the reformers, they just tried to you know, reform, literally reform Roman Catholicism. And that's a problem. But uh, I stand with a lot of the Protestant distinctions and things against Rome. But I, just, I go a lot farther in that you shouldn't reform Rome. You just get away from it. Question. I work in the heating and air conditioning field, and I've noticed that working, being with people of the trades has definitely degraded my walk with God. Is there any advice you could give? So you have to fight against that. 
you can't lose your stands. And I'd understand I used to work in a factory. I worked at a very public place. I worked with Catholics. I worked with Jehovah's Witnesses. I've worked with just lost atheistic people. I know what you're saying. You just have to, you know, you know, get through that thing and just take strong stands in front of them. Uh, thoughts on Dave Hunt. Um, his book, I have his book, the, uh, was it? Yeah, right there. A Woman Rides the Beast. Got a used copy of it at a bookstore. Um, pretty good book from what I've read of it. You know, some good things in there and whatever else. I guess he uses the King James Bible. I'm not really sure. Yeah, pretty much it's in the front there. But, um, he did some decent stuff, but I know he was not a King James, you know, Bible believer. So I have to take some issue with that. So I'm careful about recommending him. Question. What was the purpose of Tim from AVBTM, Brian Harlow, Jeremy Carter claiming to be KJV believers when they are all turn out to be false? Um, that's standard for a lot of false people. They are very much... They'll try to be, oh, I'm a King James Bible believer. I believe the King James Bible. But when pressed, they will turn away from it. What is your opinion on conservative YouTubers? I, you'd have to be more specific. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Oh boy, I'm way behind. Wondering if I'm still using my old wide margin Cambridge. Right there it is. Still there. Still falling apart. Still, uh, yeah. Duct tape together. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> People say, have it rebound. Nah, I don't think it could be away from me for very long. Grown pretty close to that Bible over the years. Question: Should communion be practiced in a certain fashion or at a certain frequency? And how do you personally approach this sacrament? Well, I don't call it a sacrament, um, but uh, you know, I don't, um, I don't think it has to be done at any kind of a prescribed. You know, once a month, once a year, you know, every weekend or something. I don't think there's anything like that. Um, you know, it's been actually a while since we've done that. So I don't have a problem with it. But to try to force it into a specific time frame, well, then you have to have scripture for that. Uh, should a Jew still keep the law when they come to Christ? I hear a lot of contradictory opinions on this. Um, no, I don't think if they have to keep the law, uh, what would be the point of it? Obviously, you couldn't sacrifice animals and you can't, you know, the eating of clean and unclean meats has, you know, been done away with. A Jew can eat that. You know, Paul rebuked Peter for um, trying to turn Gentiles into Jews when he was living after the manner of the Gentiles. So in the book of Galatians, so um a Jew can live after the manner of Gentiles today if they're saved, if they're born again. And Peter also talked about, you know, why compel us out, you know, the Gentiles, or that's Paul, sorry. Uh, trying to think of how the scripture goes, but he, Peter was basically saying that, you know, we, neither we nor our fathers could keep the commandments. So how can you keep the commandments when they're even saying it in the New Testament? You can't keep it um, have you heard about the revivals post World War II um, yeah some of them uh, there were you know war always brings revival war brings really good times to the body of Christ quite frankly so I hear people oh, I hope we can avoid civil war in America It'd be the best thing that could happen I hope we can avoid World War III. No, I don't. I think it's a be the a really good thing. 
horrible. Yes, people would die. Yes, we'd all have to suffer some and whatever else. But people would start to think about God and eternity. Right now, let's just have the good times continue. Why? So people can get more wicked? No, we need to see, you know, piles of dead bodies. It's just that simple. And historically, that's, you know, it happens. <laughs> it happens quite frequently. Um, what is your interpretation of the notion of extraterrestrials visiting Earth during ancient times? Do you think it is possible they are mentioned in the Bible? Uh, well, there are a lot of creature, creatures mentioned in the Bible that are beyond our understanding, modern day understanding. So certainly, I don't think that they were extraterrestrials. I think that they were, I think they call it infraterrestrials, you know, from the earth. Um, it, you get into some really weird stuff with some of that. I'm not denying it, but it's not something I base my ministry on. Um, question, did you ever find out if John Wesley was using electrical frequencies? You said you were going to expose him if you found more, out more about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where do I have that book? I have the book. I got the book. I just, you know, like everything else, it's just trying to get to it. I wish I had about 100 people to help me. <laughs> Maybe not 100. That might be kind of a little stressful, but, you know, certainly other researchers and other people being able to put out videos and um you know i'm an old man uh as far as technology is concerned and younger people have so much better abilities with you know computers and whatnot um and you know if you're part of gen z or gen or you know the millennials or whatever um a lot of those people are a lot more you know better with computers and they could you know you don't have to just, well, I'm part of the cursed generation of the Antichrist. Well, you know, you're part of that age group, but you can break free from what the rest of them are doing and use your talents for the Lord. And um, it would be really nice to have some people that could help out with some of this stuff. So it would free me up to be able to do more research. But right now we're just doing everything ourselves. It's not easy. Um Okay. Um, when can a Christian say they have achieved victory over a particular sin, example, pride, alcohol, or porn? Um, you'll know it when you have. Um, there will be times, I remember when I was trying to get victory over pornography, and it would go a couple months, even, you know, sometimes a year, and, it, and I'd fall and go back into it again. And it, you know, but then when I finally got victory over it, it was. The desire for it just went, you know, not the temptation. Temptation was still there in terms of it would come into my mind, but the desire to look, it was just, no, I hate that stuff now. I don't want anything to do with it. And I've heard the same thing. People will get victory over alcohol or something, and it's just, it'll come back. You'll remember it. And nah, I don't want that. You know, you just, no, I hate that stuff. I'm done with it. You know, that's when you have victory over it, when your attitude towards it changes. Um, the temptation will still hit you sometimes, but your attitude is just, no, why would I do that? That's stupid. That hurt me in the past. I don't want anything to do with that now. So. Okay. Second Chronicles 4.16. Who is this? Who is his father referring to? Uh, I think I saw this earlier. You were talking about this at the beginning, and I, I just looked at it briefly, but um, Hannah, but uh, I'm not sure here. The pots also, and the shovels, and the flesh hooks, and all their instruments did Herm, his father, make to King Solomon for the house of the Lord of break brass. Well, Herm is another name for David in the original Hebrew. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, it's. Um, you could say Herm as, you know, he's the father of, you know, working with bright brass or something like that. He was like a father to me, a father figure to me. Um, I don't know. Um, 
obviously King Solomon's father was David, so it couldn't have been the, his actual father there. Um, but in the context there, I don't know, I, I'd have to look more at the context of it. Yeah, but good question. Um, how to start working in the countryside if you were of Southern European ancestry, or would you suggest moving to in the States? Thanks. Um, in terms of you're not really into the real ultra cold north, um, you know, it depends. You know, New, the New England states have some pretty good areas. Um, start working in the countryside. The, the big thing when you move to the countryside is that you're going to be saving money by working hard around and making your own food, growing your own food. So one of you there in the comments uh, was talking about, you know, Katrina, I think they're, um, you know, raising chickens and things. That's great stuff. So the way that you can make money is actually to save a lot of money by growing your own things. Um, you know, we very well and we have very high nutrient dense foods that we actually get ourselves. So we couldn't even afford a lot of the food that we eat if we had to buy it from the grocery store. But we get it for free. We sacrifice our time to go out and get really good food, you know, which is also why I'm very busy. Um, but as far as getting a job and whatever else, uh, working from home is a good idea. Um, if you can do something online, um, selling things through Etsy, eBay, whatever. Um, that's another thing to think about. <clears throat> Have you ever realized after the death of a loved one that they weren't truly saved recently? Found out my grandfather was secretly a Catholic. Very depressing. Yeah. Um, found out after my father died that I actually he actually had an Ill illegitimate son before he married my mother and then I found out later my parents were divorced they hid that from us and I found out my mother had an Ill illegitimate child so um, and they're all professing Christians and I was raised very conservative Christian and we looked down on people that you know were divorced and remarried so Uh, Sister Chantre, uh, is it okay if I link the fellowship form and chat? Absolutely. Go ahead. Sorry, it's taking me so long to get to the comments here. <laughs> I'm trying to get through them. Um, question. By KGB standards, can I financially and morally support my unsaved adult daughter and four grandchildren while living with them? Their behavior and lifestyle greatly vexes me. Um That's a tough one. I don't know how to answer that one, to be quite frank with you. Boy, I'd have to pray about that because it's to support them when they're lost and they're being very wicked and whatever else. I mean, you're the mother. Uh, if she's old enough to be out on her own or whatever, well, then I think she needs to be out on her own. You need to just say time to go. Can you comment on Isaiah 6 relating to circumcision? I think I probably can. Isaiah chapter 6. Just kind of skimming through it here. Um, I actually have a brother that wrote a book, uh, Micah. It's close to me. And I'm trying to see if I can find it. And it's the it's called uh, the little Bible within the Bible, and it's about. Let's see it over here. Hold on one second. Okay, Micah Colston, yeah. Right here is the book, a little Bible inside the Bible by Micah Colston, and he goes into the thing of how, you know, there's 66 chapters in Isaiah. And each chapter coincides with the corresponding book of the Bible. 
and uh, rather interesting. He compares, you know, verses like right here we have Isaiah chapter 5, verse 9, and then um, Bible book number number 5, which is Deuteronomy. And, um, you know, it's pretty interesting what he found here. So, you know, you can go back to the book of Isaiah and there will be things that relate to New Testament doctrine that you can kind of see, you know, um, in there. So it would be an interesting study to do, certainly, one I have not done in great detail. Um, is it better to be lonely or go to a church building to find people that claim they love God? Maybe half do. Um, I understand, you know, you can go there and, and whatever, but, um, and you get around people that go to church buildings and you get into the social thing and whatever else. And some of them seem very nice and whatever else, but um, I've had my heart broken so many times by those types of people. You know, they just turn and stab you in the back and whatever else that I just kind of say, well, I'd rather just be, you know, try to be a uh, challenge to lost people, try to meet with lost people that are, you know, go to a farm and buy food from them and try to just plant little seeds, you know, there and, and just kind of do the work of, of an evangelist is the way I kind of look at it and try to be kind and um, to lost people out there as much as possible and, and tr just try to show the love of the Lord Jesus Christ to them. And um, if you meet a Christian, well, have some fellowship with them, certainly, but, Going to a church building, boy, there's just, I've never been to one that, that did have a lot of problems and not just, you know, and I've overlooked the problems, you know, for a long time and sometimes for years and then it just, okay, it's too much. Um, We live out in Mennonite country and lots of people have chickens and everything else. Is it possible that not everyone is supposed to grow their own and whatnot? We all have different talents, right? Yeah. I mean, there are some people that um, we're, there are farms we support that grow things and raise things that we can't. Uh, we just don't have the land for it. Um, our land is primarily forest, not very much pasture. It's an old field that we have that was once used to grow potatoes and now it's just grows a lot of herbs which we like but um absolutely you can support other people in the area uh question did you hear that the vatican is calling for all banks to bring its assets under the vatican bank by september 30th yes i did really weird to think about I kind of think that they're positioning for a stock market crash their resetting of the, the currency pretty interesting um Uh, question. Just curious to know if you have planned to talk to your son about the fact that he needs to get saved when he reaches the age of accountability. How would you tell him? Yeah, we've already talked about that with him. Um, he knows. And, uh, you know, his, uh, I mean, he prays, he talks to the Lord, he reads the Bible. Um, and I just, I kind of say, okay, son, I believe you're saved right now. If you died today, you'd go to heaven because he has asked the Lord to save him. But later when it starts to register in his mind, you know, he doesn't quite get the thing of the separation of I'm a sinner. I've done really bad here before the Lord. We have to kind of remind him that he's done that. So he doesn't quite have it developed in his head yet. And it will develop later on, I believe. And then at that point, he's going to have to make that decision between him and the Lord. And we just always say that to him, you know, I want you to go to heaven. We pray for you to go to go to heaven, but you need to get that relationship worked out, son, between you and God. Um, okay, try to get down here. Oh, boy, I'm way behind. What is the meaning of life? Um, to be a pleasure to your creator, to do things that are pleasing in his sight. Um, can Satan do you favors? Absolutely. Satan can do some really good stuff for you. 
Um, you fall down and worship him, he'll give you the kingdoms. Okay, I'm just trying to get zipped down through here. Do you purchase homeschool curriculum for Oliver or do you make your own? We make our own. Um, not going into a big detailed thing on that. Um, good morning. I'm having trouble re reconciling the following passages with the teaching that Jesus had an eternal flesh body. Okay. Um, 1 Corinthians 1.29 Okay, oh wait, I read the wrong one. Um, uh, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Um, okay, I'm just making sure I got that right. It's talking about uh, people. Mortal flesh is what it's talking about there. God hath chosen the foolish things of the world, verse 27, to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world, and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh or glory in his presence. Things of the world. It's people on the earth. Um, 2 Corinthians 4.18 Well, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Again, we're dealing with on the earth in time here in, in the world around us uh, second corinthians chapter 5 verse 16 wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh yea though we have known christ after the flesh yet now now henceforth know we him no more talking about on the earth here uh, we don't know any man after the flesh in the sense of um uh, how to explain that? Um, you can't really understand the innermost th feelings and understandings and thoughts of people. People can deceive you. Um, you know, as far as Christ was concerned, they knew him after the flesh, but now they don't anymore because he's no longer here in the flesh. Um, and then Second Peter one fourteen. Again, you know, some of the questions that some of you are asking me, I can't really just, I'm trying to answer them as quickly as I can to get to other people's questions, but it's more of a, okay, I, it's going to take a lot longer for me to answer it. So I apologize for having to kind of bust through this, but knowing that shor shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ hath showed me. Um, he's talking about, you know, the corruptible flesh and becoming incorruptible. Okay, it's, Jesus Christ has a body of, you know, an incorruptible body of flesh in heaven right now. Again, you can get into the big study on that. You know, he rises from the dead and he says, you know, don't, don't touch me, uh, Mary, until I've ascended to my father. And then he comes back down and he says, you know, handle my feet and my hands and every, not my feet, but my hands. And uh, tells Thomas, you know, put your hand in my side here and the whole thing. So, yes, he had a body after he was resurrected. Um, <clears throat> But the question there is, the debate is, did Jesus have any, a body in eternity past? Well, I went over the scriptures in that study of mine, and I do believe he did. And again, argue then from the opposite, from the negative. Where does the body say, or where does the Bible say that Jesus was a disembodied spirit? What was Jesus in eternity past? Okay, you have a couple spirits there. Show me the scripture. Okay. Um, correction. By the KGB should, I financially support and live with my unsaved daughter and four grandchildren while I help them get on their feet. Uh, I see what you're saying. You know, should you, can you, and be right, you know, versus should you, and Again, it's something you have to pray about. I mean, if she's not respecting you, if she's not respecting your authority in the home, then, you know, she needs to be told to leave. Um, 
if she's if it's just a temporary thing and whatever else well that's one thing but if she's been there for a while um you have to be careful of that <clears throat> Suggestion. Thanks for that answer. Perhaps then a one-on-one -on -one model where people could pay you hourly for your time. I'd love to just be able to talk privately one-on-one -on -one just for advice and venting. Yeah, but the problem with that is then, you know, I've done that in the past and some people, you know, don't respect my time and I'm a very, very busy man. I mean, uh, I mean, there are times when it's literally almost an emergency type of a thing I have to get oh man this thing happened here I'm having a problem we need to get to the store we need to get to this place here I need to get this get back fix this I mean it isn't something I can I can't have a scheduled time oh I have an 8:30 appointment here and I have a 10 o'clock appointment after that and whatever else my life is way too chaotic for that um, so okay <clears throat> question in first Timothy 5 8 where he, when it's when he says the person is worse than an infidel does that mean that the person who doesn't provide for his family is lost and going to hell uh, no because then you're having a problem with eternal security they're shielded until the day of redemption um but it's just simply saying in god's sight you're basically worse than a lost man and i've seen professing christians that are like that <laughs> they actually have worse morals than lost people um and god will punish for that very much so Question, how do I respond to my church doubting my salvation? I told them about how much I wept for Jesus and my changed life, and but they think I'm lying. They think I watch too many of your studies. Um, I'd get away from them. If they're questioning your salvation and things, uh, I wouldn't even waste time going there. Ryan, what's your thoughts on Waco, Texas, 1993? Um, I have a book by uh, David Thibodeau, I think his name was. He was one of the uh, Branch Davidians. I don't know where in the world it is right now. Uh, I apologize. I'm not sure. It's, it's over there somewhere. Um, and uh, basically... David Koresh was a spinoff of, they were, the whole Branch Davidians were a spinoff of the Seventh-day Adventists, and they, there was an older woman that um, was there, and she was into this weird, perverted, you know, occult magic where you have the, the hexagram, the combining of male and female is the great act that's, you know, you're supposed to get in contact with God or something like this, and David Koresh was actually fornicating with this old woman and then she died and then he took over the branch Davidian compound. They were basically a survivalist sort of cult and whatever else that were, they were making money through different means. And one of the things was uh, converting semi-automatic rifles to fully automatic. And they had a, their FFL federal firearms license to do that. And they were doing it, but they let the FFL expire and they had a couple guns that they had converted and sold. I think if I remember correctly, the ATF uh, was basically monitoring this situation. They came, they um, essentially said, we're going to raid here or they, they needed to do it. And it was not handled correctly at all. And they started to shoot into the branch Davidian compound and, you know, the branch Davidian shot back and there was a lot of, problems on both sides but uh the branch davidians were murdered by the federal agents in spite of their issues in spite of their many problems i have no doubt about that it was terrible what happened down there um
<clears throat> Question, worth moving to Maine? I live in a very diverse part of England right now, and I hate it. Um, Maine is a great place, but uh, right now, the, you know, there's going to be some things that will reset. Let me just say it that way. There's a lot of people that are uh, going to perish in the future. And the righteous are going to inherit a lot of things, I believe, as a final last time in the time of Jacob, or before the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, my theory is that uh, a lot of the wicked are going to be eliminated. I did a uh, sermon many years ago. Will there be the great tribulation before the time of Jacob's trouble? Understanding the word the great tribulation is not a Bible title. But what I was trying to say by that is. I believe there's going to be a really bad time before the Antichrist shows up and brings peace and all that other stuff. Um, so uh, in that time period, I think that people will be able to move around better and things, and there will be really good opportunities to plant some major seeds of truth for saints in the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, there's some there's some bad times coming, but through the bad times, there will be good things that happen. I'll say it that way. Have you heard of Jack Treber? He came under Hiles. Supposedly he pays soul winners to go soul damning. No, but I'm not surprised. I haven't heard of him, but it's about the way that those guys do things. Do you think the globalist reset agenda of 2030 and the 2000th year anniversary of Christ's crucifixion might be more than coincidental? Good point. Um, I've actually heard some interesting stuff about possible catching up with the body of Christ in 2033, and then you have seven years till 2040 when the Club of Rome's report came out and said that that's when a lot of stuff is going to end and whatever else. No idea if that's true or not. I have no idea. Can't trust anything that comes out of, you know, Satan or his people. Um, question, advice on renting versus buying. Do you still think it's a good, a bad time to buy? Rent prices are really rising here in Chicago. I've been praying to get out of Chicago, Illinois. Prayers and advice, please. Um, if you're in a bad situation, then the right time to get out is now. Um, as far as buying a place right now, yeah, it's still kind of a bad time. Prices are elevated, and um, it's going to be a really big crash in the housing market. It's going to be something like we've never seen before. So I would wait to buy a place. Renting, I think, is okay, but rents are so incredibly expensive right now, too. So... Okay. Question. Did you hear about the hiring Christian businesses or business speaking event that Tim Tebow and one of the Duck Dynasty actors are doing? Literally disgusting. Yeah, those guys are in it for the money. All right, I'm um, just zipping down through here trying to see if there's a question. Question, Matthew 24. I'm confused with that topic. I have always believed it was for Christians, but I have heard, heard so many say it doesn't apply to us. It does not apply to us one bit. No, I have a number of studies on that. Um, definitely does not apply to us. Question, what should Mandarin-speaking people read in terms of Bible? They don't understand understand English KJV. Their Mandarin Bible is not the same as KJV. Well, you know, people make the wrong assumption that God has to have his word available in every trans or in every language, and that's not true. I mean, he chose Hebrew for the Old Testament. New, Test New Testament, he chose Greek, and 
the whole Bible. I think the best of all is the English King James Bible. So people can make translations of it into their own languages, understanding to make it as close to the King James Bible as possible into another language. But there are many languages out there that have no access to the Word of God. That's just the way it is. And people have to learn other languages and things to get God's perfect word. I mean, you can get a, an idea in some of these other language translations, but to really get God's perfect word, you, you know, would need to learn English, in my opinion. Okay. <clears throat> Question, why were the books of the Apocrypha removed from the KJV? Do these books have truth or should they be discounted? Um, I'd have to actually look up the, uh, the statements and whatever else I knew. It was done later on where they removed the Apocryphal books. Uh, I, don't, I can't just quote it off the top of my head why or who did it. Um, the historical stuff and whatever else, it's tricky because it's books that are added to the Bible so I pretty much just stay away from them they're not needed say it that way okay I'm really behind in the comments <clears throat> question after we are saved why do you think we quickly let go of some sins but yet continue to struggle with other sins um because the devil knows us very well and uh, he knows the things that our flesh really struggles with our culture really struggles with um and that's what he'll really go after and there's ones there are times that it will take many years to you know get victory over certain sins I watched limited YouTubes, finding a lot of hand gestures of the OK, that right there, sign and triangles. The cultish, what is your discernment? Uh, vexing. It's some people do it, but they just re, are acting out what they're seeing. Other people, they're actually involved in the occult. You have to, you know, discern through some of that stuff. Um, I'm trying to get down to the bottom of this whole thing here, just looking for the word question. Hi, Brian. Tuning in late. How are you and the family doing? Doing good. Hopefully you're doing good, too. Uh, just thought I'd put that one up. I know you didn't say question, but... <laughs> um, Oh, man. Am I down to the bottom? Um, question. Why are you saying video games are bad? Because they are. Um, I wasted a lot of time on video games. And, you know, see, here's the thing. There are so many things in this world that you can make the argument, well, in moderation, a little bit. You know, if you eat a little bit of sugar, it's not a big deal. Is it a big deal? Will sugar send you to hell? No, it won't. But it's slowing you down. It's slowing down, you know, brain function, whatever else. If you want sugar, you can get it from a natural source. Uh, strawberries, raspberries, cherries, you know, bananas, oranges, apples, whatever. Um, even other types of, you know, vegetables will have some level of sugar in them. But sugar, you have to get to a point where you say, you know what, is this even helping me by eating a sweet candy or cookie or whatever else? See, and I got to the point in my life where I said, video games are not helping me to be a better man. They're not helping me to spend my time more wisely. It's messing up my eyesight. It's messing up my health. And you know what? I just got to the point where I got burned out with video games. And I don't mean 
playing Need for Speed or one of these other, you know, Grand Theft Auto or something where you burn out. Little joke there. Um, no, I just, I got sick and tired of it. And I said, I don't want to spend my time inside playing a video game when the sun is shining outside and I hear birds singing and I want to be out there. That makes me feel really good. And I mean, I would play video games all night sometimes, wake up, you know, go to bed at 530 in the morning and stayed up the whole night to beat some level or whatever else. And, and I thought, is this really what I want out of life? So that's why I speak against video games so harshly. A lot of people don't understand that. Are there any scriptures about cremation? Uh, yeah, I did a whole study on cremation, the origin of it and everything else. You can look that up. If you had the chance, would you prefer to stay in the U.S. or go to Latin America when the Western nations fall? I'm not going to Latin America. I couldn't handle the heat down there. The older I get, the, the more I am heat intolerant. I'm very intolerant when it comes to high temperatures. I've been to Costa Rica. I've been to Honduras. Uh, Costa Rica was very beautiful. Um, a lot of neat things down there, but oh, I could not handle it. It's bad. 80 degrees anymore, and I'm... You know, it's bad. Okay. What do you think of people charging for Christian courses? Well, if they have to put money and time into it, then they have a right to charge something within reason. Is the Church of Thyatira connected to Catholic Church and they can be saved in the time of Jacob's trouble? Uh, okay, let me think here. Revelation chapter 2, Ephesus starts it out. Smyrna, Pergamos. Okay, verse 18. And under the church, angel of the church in Thyatira, write, These things saith the Son of God who hath his eyes like a, unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and they, them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. It goes into the last couple of verses. Um, 26 through 29 is actually more about Jesus Christ. But uh, can those people be saved in the time of Jacob's trouble? Will there be Catholics, I'll say it that way, that get saved in the time of Jacob's trouble? Yes, I think that there will be some. Um, certainly. Question, but do you realize that there isn't anything in, inherently wrong with gaming? I guess things what you're saying. It all depends on the person, so maybe it's not helping you, but there are applications where it's good. Um, well, I gave my opinion. You can disagree with me. Um, you know, all you want to, but I'm giving you life examples and life experience. Um, learn to listen to the words of an older man. I have gray hair for a reason. Okay. I have to wear glasses for a reason. Uh, there were a number of years where I stopped. You know, my eyes actually returned to 2020 vision, and I was able to get rid of my eyeglasses because during those years I had been playing video games up through my childhood, 
starting as a little boy and then i got into dirt biking and i was actually outside all the time dirt biking um and i stopped wearing glasses they were actually giving me headaches and i went back to the eye doctor and he tested my eyes and he said you don't need to wear glasses anymore after a number of years of dirt biking in my early 20s i got back into video games again and i had to start wearing glasses so you know there's practical advice there that you can listen to from an older man that just simply says don't waste your time on video games so okay question could you do a video on the iblp bill gothers program it's a big thing among some people especially here in texas it's teaching teachings have infiltrated many churches i believe it's a cult honest i know who bill gothard is but i don't know what i iblp thing i'll look into it iblp okay i'll check into it sorry i don't have a, a better answer than that In 1827, Bob, I saw a chart showing Saturday is Sabbath. Yes, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Yes, you don't have to keep it or anything else. Um, when do you think hell was created? Good, uh, uh, good question. I don't know. Not sure. Prepared for the devil and his angels, Matthew chapter 25, but when was that prepared or whatever? I have no idea. I'm going, going to make videos directly challenging you, Bruan. Well, my name's Brian. Okay, so uh, if you want to challenge me to video gaming, uh, that's not going to happen. I have better things to do with my time. I'm not a loser. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, Brian, will the Antichrist be possessed or influenced by Satan? Yes, I firmly believe that he will be. Um, the dragon gives him his power. Well, that could mean his seat and great authority. That's there in context, but I think it's also going to be um you know the dragon gives him his power in the sense of you know like the father is in the soul of jesus the dragon is going to be inside the antichrist a perversion of what the godhead is you know you say do you believe in the trinity actually yes i do i do believe in the trinity the antichrist the false prophet and the dragon three persons so i do believe in that and if the devil is doing this if he's behind it and he obviously is then he's going to counterfeit the godhead only he can't be one person and like you know god can but the what the devil is going to do is he will indwell the body of the antichrist he'll possess him so good question troll down <laughs> isn't that just awful I was looking forward to having a video game fight too, you know. Actually, I wasn't. Uh, question Do we have to physically wash each other's feet like what Jesus did for his disciples? Well, do you have to water other brethren's uh, horses or help them grease the wheels on their chariot? Or, you know, no. That was a first century thing that needed to be done. It's just a thing of humility. So if you'd come here, you'd say, oh, you know, Brother Brian, he needs to have the house painted or something. Hey, can I do that for you, brother? Can I paint the place for you? Oh, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you. And you come up, you go to my property and I'm out there stacking fire. Will you come over? Hey, can, let me help you. <clears throat> it's just a thing of 
find something to do that you can help a brother or sister in Christ. First century, they're walking around in sandy areas with their sandals and everything else. You get a bunch of sand in there. My feet are getting really sore, abraded and things. Let me wash your feet for you. See, it's just being a servant to your brother. <clears throat> Question, my little brother is nine and has a great love for truth. Do you have any sources for true history that I could teach him at home? Um, hmm. I'm just trying to think on that one. Uh, boy, that's a good question. That's a very good question, Katrina. Um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Um, any sources for truth? Uh, you know, history and, and things like that. Um, true history. Oh, boy. Kind of caught me off guard on that one. I, I don't know. I don't have a I don't have any specific book that I could point to. Just, you know, get some books and just kind of point out what truth is there and just say, okay, yeah, over here, look at this. This doesn't work. They're saying this and it contradicts, you know, whatever. But uh, that's one I would have to do some research into before I could recommend a book on that. <clears throat> Question, why do you feel it's okay to berate men who think differently than you? Um because I'm berating the lies that they are teaching. Um, I don't hate anybody. Okay, I'm actually a very nice guy, very uh, friendly and whatever else. But in my preaching, I hate wishy-washy preaching. And, you know, I heard a guy call it wee-wee preaching, where you say we are all guilty of sin and we are all sinners and we all that, you know. Well, you're supposed to have victory as a preacher. You're supposed to be a strong leader. That's why I do that. But, you know, if I see somebody I disagree with, I'll talk with them and sit down and hear their complaints about what I do and whatever. I'm fine with that. But when I preach, I want to make what I'm saying very plain. And that's why I oftentimes will say this guy's a jerk or stupid or whatever else. Um, I don't hate the guy. OK, it comes off that way. I realize where people could think that. But that's not really what I feel. Um. Question, when the fall of the West comes, do you think it will be worse in the U.S. or Europe? I don't know how to answer that one. It could go either way. I don't know. Um, Europe has a place in Bible prophecy. America does not. But that doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing for America because it could just be sort of like a third world country, which would be actually really good. Um, I've been in third world countries. They're in many ways a lot freer. In America they don't care if you do certain things down there and Honduras and things that you know okay pile a whole bunch of people in the back of a pickup truck and go to town eh, you know you drive right by the police wave hey how you doing <laughs> here in America oh that's violating all kinds of rules and they don't each have seat belts or you know whatever so America could actually fall and yet be a really good place to live we'll just have to wait and see Um, do you think the veil between this world and spiritual could ever uh, be broken? Maybe by CERN, um, possibly, I don't know. Uh, is Obama, do you think the Antichrist, many say, he, yes, he is, or he will be young and Jewish or European in your opinion. I don't believe the Obama is the Antichrist. No, absolutely not. Um, there's a lot of debate on that, who he is and whatever else. <clears throat> uh, question, do you think the Antichrist will be a Syrian? There are some scriptures in Isaiah that seem to teach that he will be an, an Assyrian. I don't know. I'm not really an expert on that. Um What is your opinion on the Earth's shape? NASA in Hebrew means to deceive. And uh, NASA is a very evil organization. I'm not for NASA. Well, then you must believe the Earth is flat. I don't know. Okay, there are arguments for and against and whatever. And I don't have time to sit down and thoroughly study it right now. So people want to leave the ministry because I'm not a dedicated, hardcore, flat earther. Well, whatever. I can't help people like that. Um, 
NASA is definitely a satanic organization. Definitely. Uh, their Bible, <clears throat> the Bible says, all the Bible says about the shape of the earth is it's a circle. So if you want to make that flat or the cross section of a sphere or whatever else, I could care less. I really don't. Um, you'll never find anybody in scripture condemning somebody else because of the shape of the earth or something. It is a foolish um, thing to get into where you're starting to condemn other people because they don't believe exactly like you believe. There's no scripture for that. Okay, the shape of the earth is not something that you part company over or reject a ministry for. I wish people could get that through their heads. <clears throat> Question, what do you think about Eucharistic miracles done by devils? Quite frankly, the devils can do, I mean, Janice and Jambres, the two magicians of Pharaoh, they were doing most of the miracles that Moses was doing. So you can have all kinds of stuff happen with the Catholics and, and things like that. Uh, definitely. And, you know, and where does the New Testament say that we're supposed to have Eucharistic miracles? It doesn't. Question, did you advance your study on of the building of the third temple of Israel? Regarding the Vatican and Jews and Islam, it's one of the most interesting, I think. I haven't really looked into it any more than what I did years ago, and they kept removing the video that I was linking to. So, um, <clears throat> Question, how do you even know that sin exists? <laughs> because I have a life of, to prove it. Are you kidding me? I have scars to prove it. You know, the Bible condemns certain things and says the wages of sin is death. Well, I've gotten pretty close a few times. Yes, I can prove sin exists. If God is so perfect, lowercase g, it's capital G. You're referring to Satan. Satan is not perfect. Um, if God is so perfect, then why should, would he make it so we have to be saved in such a poor way? Um, well, if you would drop your self-righteousness, you would understand the whole point there. God gives us a free will. And most of us take our free will and use it to really royally screw up our lives. Right. And if your life isn't screwed up yet, we'll stick around. You will mess it up eventually. And then you have to get to the point where you realize I can't save myself. I need to go back to the my creator and say, I need help here. I need help with this, you know, and whatever. And oh, you know, the Bible is your word. It's the owner's manual. The instruction manual and it tells me what sin is and it tells me to avoid this stuff and it will hurt me and yeah i've experienced that so it also tells me that i can go to heaven when i die and i'd really like to go there and that's how the thing works it's not that complicated what if you want to believe you came from a rock and you know explosion billions of years ago and whatever else and there's no purpose to life well good luck with that and I don't believe in luck. I'm just using that as a statement. Stop deleting messages of people who don't agree with you. Why are you deleting? Why are you deleting our messages? I delete comments if there's profanity in them um, or people putting links into other websites and things. But YouTube has deleted comments on my channel for years. I've documented them doing it. So don't get offended and always, you know, He's censoring my free speech and whatever else. No, it's YouTube is deleting the comments. Again, you can look at my videos where I prove it. Question, is the Antichrist not supposed to be of Jewish lineage in order for Jewish priests to accept them today as the Messiah? Um, I don't know. Uh, I did a whole thing about it. does the Antichrist have to be Jewish? There's an old study I have on that. Ah, brother. Okay, some of the questions I'm seeing here, and it's just, okay, that's going to be, um, you know, uh, too big, I can't answer that right now. So, um, okay, I'll answer this one here. What are your thoughts about a man working away for work that has a younger family? 
problematic, obviously, because you have the wife sometimes needs the dad there, you know, and if he's not coming home every night, that can get kind of tricky. I know sometimes it has to happen that way if you need the money and whatever else, but yeah, not easy. How do you teach your son homeschooling? Um, well, uh, through experience, experience based education, if I can say it that way. Um, we'll bring up a subject and we'll talk about it at mealtime. And then if he wants to learn more, I'll say I can show you proof of this son. Um, I actually expose my son more probably to secular things than I do to uh, the Bible itself, but then I'll take that secular stuff and I'll relate it to the scriptures and tie it in there. Um, you know, we go places, I show him things, um, we'll go and we look and we explain things, you know, we'll, uh, there's a garage where we'll go and there's a plow truck and we'll walk out and say, okay, now what's that part right there? Um, you know, what's this? Where's the transfer case at? Where's the, where are the axles at, son? Where the brakes? What kind? Is it drum brakes or disc brakes on this truck? Or something? you know, and we do stuff like that. Um, you know, what kind of bird is that? What kind of this is that? Okay, here you need to add up. You know, what's this price tag on this item here at the grocery store? Now, if you want that and that, add those two together. What would that be? You know, and, and what's today's date? And you know, while we're out doing things, I'm constantly teaching, and my wife does the same. What does the Bible say about suicide? I recently lost the father of my children. He died by suicide. He accepted Jesus and was a Christian who was a believer. I worry for his salvation. Um, yeah, I don't understand why he would have committed suicide. I mean, I understand depression, getting really down. I've been there myself a number of times. Um, I have a study I did on suicide. Um, you know, Samson committed suicide. And he's regarded as one of the heroes of the faith in the book of Hebrews. So he really messed up his life. And he said, let me die with the Philistines. And he pulled the you know columns in and the temple came down and he killed himself along with the Philistines. That was suicide. And he's listed as a hero of the faith in the book of Hebrews. Like I said, it gets tricky. Um, you know, when you have a wife and children to take care of, and you commit suicide. Um, well, it's a tragic thing to do, a very selfish thing to do. Um, have I been there at times in my worst bouts of depression? Yeah, I have. I'm not going to lie about that. I've thought about it. And uh, some of the hard times I've gone through. Um, does it mean he was lost? I don't know him. I, I don't know. I can't judge one way or the other on that. A man can get really messed up and get really far away from the Lord as a saved man and end up committing suicide or something as a really big mistake because he was thinking about himself and, and whatever else. Um, a man that's married with children, the first priority is them, not me. And you get away from that, anything can happen at that point in time. So I'm very sorry to hear about that. I really am. Uh, Do you think Russia is going to rise up as the bear in the book of, Reve uh, of, of Daniel? Would it be better there, Ukraine divided and Europe fallen? I've thought about that. Um, I've definitely thought about the thing of Russia possibly for Christians in the future, but I have no idea. I have no idea how this thing's going to work out. World War III, um, could World War III actually be fought partly on the shores of America? I don't know. I don't know what, you know, are they going to turn certain parts of America into little smart city things or something like this? That's a possibility. But as messed up as this country is right now, 
uh, you know, all the stuff that's coming out, you know, they're having to shut down power. Please don't charge your car because it's too much stress on the power grid. <laughs> we have to shut down homes because they have smart meters. And you just think, oh, yeah, okay, how are we going to possibly make smart cities in this country? You know, I would think smart cities would, re would require smart people. And they're, you know, they're in short supply in America. So <laughs> I have no idea. What would be the best place? You just have to play it by ear. You know, the book of Acts and the church is scattered throughout Asia and things. The Lord could do some things to scatter us and we could end up, some of us in Russia, and we're over there witnessing to the people that might be open to the gospel by that time. Just, Lord, whatever your will is, from now till the catching up, I'm yours. My life is yours. Tell me what to do. <sighs> So, this is another one I'd like to answer quick. Question, do you really think everyone will die from the death shots or will some survive due to placebos? I don't know. I'd have to have knowledge of there being placebos. They say that there were, but proof, I have no idea. Um, I really don't know. I think those that have taken it, you know, there might be some that they're... Um, particular makeup of how God made them. I hate to use the term genetics, but you know, the way that they are and their nutrition, they might be able to detox from it. Or I have no idea at this point in time, you know, did all of them can contain the MRNA stuff? Did all of them contain this and that? And I don't know. I think it was one huge, big scientific experiment by big pharma on the population. And some people will get through and others won't. I don't know. Uh, what should we do if brothers in Christ keep praising men such as Calvin, saying that someone such as him are saved? I thought Calvin was a heretic. I do believe he was he was a heretic. Um, you know, I don't understand how people can go along with this whole John Calvin saved thing. So I don't know. Um, okay, here's another one. I'll answer quick. Question for you, brother. Why do some people have accusations about Jews being corrupt financial people, often in high places? Because they are. Um, there are some very wicked, very corrupt Jews. The Satan, one of his favorite tactics is marrying a Catholic and a Jew. Get those married together, and then they'll go on to produce very evil children, and they'll get the connections and whatever else. Zionist Jews, fascist Catholics. They're constantly, they're, they're not fighting because the, the Catholics control the Zionist Jews, but the Zionist Jews kind of do things that are a little bit um, not direct, not the directive will of the Catholics, <laughs> more the permissive will, little joke there. Um, but uh, the, see, it's kind of weird because you have the Zionist Jews and the fascist Catholics both actually have a prophecy, prophetic future. So they're, they both can't be wiped out. You know, the, the Catholics can't totally get rid of the Jews and the Jews can't totally get rid of the Catholics because they're both mentioned in the future in the book of Revelation. So they both kind of know we're somewhat invincible here because there's a future for us mentioned in scripture. That's why there's some fighting back and forth there. But yeah, the Jews, there's some really powerful ones, very satanic ones. When I say I defend the Jews and whatever, I'm not saying every one of them um, they have a place in the future. So I'm going to end it there with that one. Um, I apologize if I didn't get to your question, uh, but we're just about two and a half hours into this thing now. So that's going to be that. Um, so, uh, you know, if I haven't answered your question, please take it up with the Lord, my boss, you know, um, he can answer your questions better than I can. Uh, so <clears throat> this, I mean, you, you answer this many questions. It starts to scramble the old brain up here. Um, <laughs> it's fun. I have a great time doing it. I like to do it, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff.
But uh, yeah, thank you everybody out there for your questions and thank you for your support of the ministry. Um, so, uh, um, it's kind of a cloudy day outside right now. Um, supposed to be in the uh, 70s, I guess, or something today. So it's we're starting to cool down at night now and everything else, which is nice. And then the bugs are finally going away. Um, okay, 1,000 questions answered today. It might have been. Uh, but yeah, that it's this is a good time of the year. And then we're going into winter. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, so um, I guess that's going to be it. I'll try to look into some of that other stuff there some definitely some interesting points brought up um, so but uh, you know get in contact with each other too and and um, see if there's anybody in your area that you can meet up with and things I know people have done that and that's a great thing but uh, be careful as well have some discernment um, so that is going to be it i guess we will see everybody in the next video um probably not sure i'm going to be doing some more live streams probably this coming week um so a few different articles and things that my wife found uh some really shocking information so i'll probably i was going to incorporate it into studies but i'm going to be doing live streams on it and um so I think that's it uh, a little bit out of it right now. So, but, uh, okay, well, I'll end the broadcast now. So grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Stand by the King James Bible. There's your authority right there. Okay. See you in the next video.